My name is Ed Barrowsid and I run EPRI's Advanced Metering Systems project set. Utilities today are gathering unprecedented amounts of information via their advanced metering systems. To be able to take this vast amount of data and turn it into some actionable intelligence is really important. Having a platform by which to do that is vital. The grid is becoming increasingly complex. Things like distributed energy resources pose new challenges to how we operate our grid. The amount of sensors on the grid is also growing at an amazing rate, with increased deployment of digital fault recorders that measure at an extremely fast 4,500 times per second, to PMUs on our transmission and distribution systems, to information flowing out of our SCADA system, all the way down to AMI meters that are recording at a relatively slow four times per hour. This data will allow for an increasingly complex grid to be operated more efficiently and more reliably. To do this, a single platform is needed which can store all the grid's data, ease data interactions and access, while enabling AI solutions. Ping Things has shown success in working with the grid's fastest sensor data, digital fault recorders and PMUs. But we want to test their system with the grid's slowest data, and that's AMI meters that only update once every 15 minutes. We selected a sizable chunk of AMI meter data, though, that came in at over 8 terabytes in an uncompressed state. Testing the Ping Things platform with the grid's slowest data would be quite beneficial. It would allow us to see if they still had good performance with this slow sensor data. And if they did, well, their platform is then a single grid analytic solution. But we wanted to do this by tackling real world problems. And we chose secondary connectivity modeling and customer phase identification, which are both foundational for having an accurate grid model as well as good customer experience. Solving real world problems is important. Strawman comparisons and synthetic benchmarks only go so far. To test a tool's performance, you have to build something with that tool. And to tell us more about what we built, I'll kick it over to Ankush, a data scientist at Amron. We now look at how we perform the benchmarking of the two platforms. At Ameren, we collected the raw data and handed it off to Ping Things. To process this huge data set, we had to set up an EMR cluster on AWS with 8 machines and 64 cores. We developed an algorithm in PySpark to solve the secondary connectivity problem. The algorithm is based on correlations between voltage signatures for every pair of meters. Ping Things also refactored our algorithm to run on their platform. So with this, we had two same algorithm executed on the same data set, but on two separate platforms. This benchmarking would help Ameren to gain insights on its cloud computing capabilities and also guide us for our future analytics efforts. At Ameren, full-time data scientists worked with interns at the Ameren Innovation Center in Champaign. A loud shout out to one of our interns, Dara Zerlin, who helped us to optimize all our algorithms. Now I will hand it over to Sean, who will continue with the next slides. Since this project started in June, it's been a pretty wild ride for Ping Things. We are a seed stage company and have literally doubled in size in the last few months adding eight new full-time software engineers and data scientists. Further, we have one new customers, not just in energy, but also oil and gas, transportation and cable, all of them needing help with time series data at scale. As a result of this growth, we've now entered into our Series A fund rates. Scott did an excellent job of overviewing the project and its importance and objectives. I wanna quickly talk about the timing of the work in the Ping Ping's team. We were originally slated to start the project at about the end of May, but due to the types of delays that all data analytics projects tend to run into, we didn't actually get all of the data until August 1st. Since then, we stood up a separate instance of our predictive grid platform. We developed an ingester for the smart meter data, ingested all the data, analyzed its data quality, developed prototype analytics for all three algorithms, and optimized one for production, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Not only 
Have we done this along a compressed timeline? We've done so with a very small team. Chris Ryan, shown on the right, really has done all of the work. I've attended meetings, my CTO has helped with infrastructure questions, and Alan really stepped in to help lead our training sessions. But Chris did all the work, and the thing to note is that he was hired during the summer and basically learned to use the platform on the fly as he executed. The platform we've been talking about is the Predictive Grid platform. We built this to make creating value from time series data, from sensor data, easy as possible. Data at rest tends to stay at rest, and the harder it is to explore and analyze and build analytics from your data, the less likely a utility will be to use its own data. Scott has been urging me to make sure that everyone understands the platform's advantages. Not just how we are different from AWS, but how we are different from other analytics platforms. We believe that your sensor data is incredibly valuable and built a platform to help you create value from it. The predictive grid platform can handle much larger data volumes into the petabytes of time series. Our platform is both provably faster and faster in benchmarks, often by orders of magnitude. And we built it from the ground up for analytics, not just storage. And we tried to make it as cost effective as possible. The easier we make it to work with your data, the greater the ROI will be for your use cases. Now, we aren't the right fit for everyone, and there are at least a few options or a spectrum of solutions when working with AMI data. There are cloud providers like Amazon that give you all of the individual pieces that you need to build your own solution. Then there are vendors on the other side of the spectrum. There are vendors that provide beautiful but fixed functionality. As Henry Ford said, about the Model T, you can have it in any color you want as long as it's black. And then there's ping things, or I should say Goldilocks. We're in the middle, we're trying to offer flexibility with insane performance so that you can quickly build analytics. On the surface, the two processes that Ameren and ping things focused in building out a similar set of analytics for smart meter data, they look similar, but there are some very critical differences. First, when you build your own platform with AWS, you face a three-body problem between your users, IT, and AWS. Your analytics groups are the users, your customers. IT assembles the solution in Amazon, and AWS provides the building blocks. Now, IT has now become the vendor providing a product to your team, a product that must be maintained, evolved, and expanded over time based on user feedback. Also, if AWS doesn't have what you need, you're just out of luck. And this actually manifested itself in this project with Apache Spark via EMR. Now, to close things out, we're, we will discuss our benchmarks. This was comparing voltage cor correlation calculations with 64 substations. On the left is AWS with Elastic MapReduce and S3 as assembled by Ameren. And on the right, the Ping Things Predictive Grid platform. So note that the sequence of steps for on each side are basically the same. Load data, transform data, then do the calculations. Now note on the left that it was an eight machine cluster, each machine with eight virtual CPUs and 64 gigs of RAM. And it took about 60 to 70 minutes to do the 64 substation correlations. Um, on the right side with the predictive grid, we actually computed in on the same order of magnitude time in about 35 minutes, but we used far fewer resources, i.e. we were only using a single machine running in a Jupyter notebook, um, using eight gigs of RAM, and using one to two cores of a very old Xeon processor. Uh, please note that we are further validating these benchmark results the rest of this week. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Amron's very excited to dive into the details of your team's awesome results. These results are showing that Ping Things Predictive Grid is a high performance solution for all the grid's data. Sean's team and their product have been tested in a new way in this project, and this will help shape their next generation query engine, guide their enhancement to the visualization system, and it gave them a new perspective on large scale compute requirements. We'll be wrapping up this project in the coming weeks and finalizing details of an extension of this work. Also, Amron's going to be reviewing our findings in detail 
with our cloud team and also our architects to refine our strategy for time series sensor data and analytics. It's been interesting for me to see how utility expertise and data science expertise merge in this project. I am very much looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. Thank you.